Good morning. Hi, everybody. It's Kate Quinn from Fabricated Quilts, and today we're going to share some additional designs from this fun and fancy demo sampler that we have where we're just going to quilt the tar out of it. So this is part three of this session. We've already done two different groupings and we'll see how far we get today. This might be our last one or maybe we need one more. I'm not really sure. We'll figure that out. So welcome, welcome. Who's here? Can you hear me okay? How's the sound and the visuals? How are you guys doing? I'm going to turn some of these. I got weird stuff on the screen because it puts this star comment. I want to disable that because I can't see what I'm doing because it covers up my screen. <laughs> good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Okay, well, we got a few people, so let's go ahead and we'll get started. Oh, thank you so much. Somebody just commented that my uh, double wedding ring quilt is stunning. So I appreciate that. Thank you so much, Patsy Wilkerson. I honestly, you know, I think part of quilting in general, part of the draw of, of it being a quilter is that next project and challenging yourself and still feeling like you're growing. And definitely after I was done with that, I was dancing around the house. So <laughs> It's not that I feel like I have learned everything that I can learn. I never feel like that. I think that's part of the passion is that we still feel like there's more to do and more to learn. So that was pretty fun and very excited to, to share it with my family and, and with all of you. So very excited. So where we are today, we've done in some of our first sessions, we did this section right here and we did this little fill right here. And I wish you guys could see how cute it is if, if you take a step back. You know, I think so many times we're like, oh, see up close, look at there's a problem. No, there isn't. When I look at it from about three feet away, it looks so awesome. <laughs> so don't ever let people put their noses on your quilt. They might get snot on your, on your quilt. So they tell them they have to step back. That's why when you go to a show, they have all those ropes so that you have to look at it from a little far away, right? You know, that's the rule. <laughs> so somebody asked last week if they could see the little, little squirrely, let's see if I can get this in the camera. There you go, that little guy. They wanted to see that overlapping bit right there. And I think when I look at that, let's see if I can point right here. Don't point, right? I think I could have probably put one more and come right in here. But you know, nobody is gonna notice those things. They're really not. It's you who's noticing those. If we just look at it right there, even just that far away, right? It looks fine. It looks totally fine. So don't get yourself worked up. Let yourself just enjoy the process and don't feel like everything has to be exactly, exactly like, see this one's winging out? Well, his partner's winging out too, so they're good to go, okay? So don't, don't worry about the, don't sweat the small stuff. Isn't that a common phrase? It needs to be like the key phrase in quilting, right? Okay, so let's start. Let me show you what we're gonna do today. This is where we're gonna start working. So I wanna put some like little definition right in these. And so we're gonna have to sort of sneak across. So as we do this one, then we'll sneak over here and sneak down and this will be the next one right here and then we'll sneak over so this line this part right here will have the same double stitching and when we do the bottom this part will have the same double stitching so these little triangle kind of things these little um, sort of diamond shapes triangles I don't know where I'm at today diamonds then they'll be the same the double stitching for the path will be the same so, you know, remember that it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be the same. So that's not a rule. But because this is a heavy thread, this is 40 weight, if we can think about the path ahead of time and we can match it, it's worth trying to do that because then it's going to be less visually distracting. So there's no rule about it. The more quilting you have, the less that will matter. But if that's the only quilting that we did in this, then I think it would be worth making sure that we have it the same on both sides. Okay, 
So let's get us going. So today I'm working on my baby lock in case anybody is interested in that information. I have a baby lock Altair and mostly I love its embroidery. If I didn't have to keep switching locations back and forth to be in the camera, I probably wouldn't. I would just leave it over there and let it embroider all day long. But it does quilt very nicely. So let's see if we can get us in a little closer. I think my cord's in the way. There we go. Okay. And let's get you in a little closer too. So I was trying to give you a nice wide view, but I think we need to be a little closer. All right, let's see if we have any questions already this morning. Wow, hi from Brazil. We've got lots of people from different places. Okay, well, let's get sewing. That's a lot of talking. So right in there with this machine, this has a ready to stitch position and a stitch position. So note if I tap my foot control, that is the stitch position. So that's just something that this machine has. It's good to be aware of what your machine does. Inside this little cutout, I'm just going to try to go right to the middle, right down the line. Okay, and now what I want to do, let me see if I can draw it in for you on one of these other ones. With these type of things, this curve and this curve, I like to try to follow that. So here, what I'm going to do is kind of use this as the guide since we don't have the other side. So I'm going to kind of stitch out and back and out and back. And then this is the middle. So in the middle, I'm kind of going to go straight and then out and back and fill in because now this becomes the boundary that helps you see what space is right there. So if you have the right and left limit, you can divide your space better, right? So I think I can get at least two in the center and here we'll do one and two. We're going to try to make it match. So once we get back here, we'll sew right here and we'll sew down. And then now we have this side. So we're, we're going to go one, two, center, one, two, back to the center. So then, then everybody stitched and then we'll just sneak over again. So follow the arc, keep the shape, center is straight follow the arc, split the difference, and travel. And by doing that, by putting this little bit in there, we have the visual of the center, so then this last one goes right in the middle. And that's kind of how we're spacing it visually. So the first one I think is the hardest, but we'll just do it. So a little speed. These are short distances. And the benefit to a short distance is I think most people can sew straight for a very short distance. Like we can't sew this with, with a, without help. This is too long, but we can sew little distances and follow that. So now I'm gonna travel. So I'm going a little slower, try to keep myself right inside. And again, your fingertips are your helper. So just make sure that they're working for you nice and good. Get you right in there. Okay, remember, now we'll do this side first because we're on that side. Shallow. Okay, and then center is kind of straight. Then we'll do this side and split the difference right there. Okay, And again, looking through that little opening or if you had a better uh, free motion foot that has more visibility, you should be very comfortable switching that up. There's no reason that you have to use what I'm using if you find something else that works better for you. Okay, so right to the center and let's get our fingers in position, shallow. A little speed is good here. Straight. The other piece I like with this design is we get a little thread buildup right at the center position right there where we are now. We're going to get that on both sides so that'll have a lot of definition that'll bring your eye right to there. So that if any of these are not quite exact, nobody's going to see that because their eye's going to go right there. So let's go ahead. 
a little even sound on your machine. Oh, I'm off a little bit. Guess what? Who cares? It's going to be fine. I'm just going to keep going. I'm not going to let myself get worked up. You guys know I'm not perfect. I've, I've told you that a bunch of times. I think there are quilters who really can have that level of per perfection, but it's really hard to be fun when you have so much stress over having every little stitch be perfect. And I, I want to have fun. I want this to be something that's relaxing, less stressful. So try to just change your way of thinking about it and that'll make it a little bit more fun. Straight. Do the outside one first. And then split the difference. Okay, I'm right in the center. So again, so that center mark is the border right there that cuts this right in half. This is the straight. So we're just gonna put one more in and then we'll leave it there. We won't try to crowd more in there than we can really fit in there. So there, what do you think? That looks awesome, doesn't it? I love it. <laughs> so exciting. Okay. Let's flip it around. We got it. We got to turn it. Otherwise you can't see it. If you're at home, you don't have to turn it. It's fine. You should just feel free to just keep on sewing. So here we'll do the same thing. Use the outer curve as the guide. And we'll put one more in there, make it match. And then just slowly travel, travel, travel. So I always recommend practicing this travel stitching. This is so important. Nobody is good at it the first time they do it. Believe me, I sucked at it. I was terrible. And I kept thinking, oh, I just, I don't want to do it. I can't do that. I can't do that. Well, it's just like anything. If you don't do it, you will never get good at it. So anytime that you have sort of a free stitch area where you don't, you're not too worried about the perfection piece, do this all the time. Travel over your existing stitches to get to the next sewing area, always. And I promise you, you will get better at it. Straight. Okay, do the outside one first. And split it. And then follow. Maybe take your first stitch or two to make sure you're in the line. Look inside the, that opening so you can find where you need to be. I think maybe you'll notice that I kind of stop in between each one. And I think I do that because I want to kind of get a visual orientation. So I, I do kind of take stock when I get to the, that center position. And when you're stitching over, try not to stitch too slow. I think it looks more jerky here if you stitch super slow. So a little bit of speed will help smooth out the movement. So, so that's what I mean right here. We're stopped in the middle. So I'm, I'm sort of taking a visual inventory of the space. So this one's a little bigger. This one's a little smaller right here. So I'm going to need to make these just a little bit tighter and it's important that you actually respond to what the quilt is telling you. So I'm going to just make these a little bit tighter so they can still be balanced. Okay, right there. And here we go. Make sure I'm in the line and then get a little speed for smoothness. So always with these type of things, I really recommend that you finish the curve. Like don't do this, don't stop here. Cause then you end up kind of having to be like, okay, I'm following it, I'm following it. Uh. But if you go out and in, your brain can totally remember the feel of that motion for just a few seconds. 
and that makes it a lot easier to get that matching uh, feel as you come back out of the curve. That one's a little bigger, so I'm just going to go ahead and put the rest in there because I can. All right, so we are done. And let's see, we we probably need to double stitch out to there, tack it off. Just as a reminder, when you're done sewing, this is a polyester thread and this is a 40 weight. So it's, it's pretty heavy and polyester is a little slicker than some threads. Not, not super, you know, pooling, but it can be a much smoother. So I like to put at least five or six micro tacks in there. Then you can lift up your needle and your foot. You're gonna hold on to this thread here and put your needle right back in line with where you took your last stitch. Ooh, excuse me. When we put the needle down and up, that's gonna pick up that thread, that bobbin thread. And I love that because then I don't have to get under there. I don't have any loose threads on the bottom. Very powerful. So the bobbin thread is this thread right here. I'll just show you right here. So when I move the quilt away, the bobbin thread will just come out. So now that's not connected anymore. And then I have these two threads that I just trimmed and I'll just cut those close and I'll cut these other ones as well. Somebody asked me, why do I always leave threads on there while I'm sewing? Usually, right at the beginning where I start, the needle is, is covering up the initial tacking area. So generally speaking, I wanna cut the thread pretty close and I usually can't when the needle is right there. So then I just start going, well, I'm not gonna stop and cut. I'm just gonna come back to it later. So, so look how cute that is. Doesn't that look awesome? I love it. And then, you know, I can see that there's little differences in here, but you know what? Nobody cares. I promise you. And as always, if you use a lighter weight thread, then, you know, this becomes a little bit less contrast, right? This is very high contrast. So you're going to see everything with this. So if we use like a darker gray or maybe a, a 60 weight instead of a 40 weight thread, you're not going to have as much of this showing. But remember, you're looking at it like this. If we take this away, I'm just gonna scoot out and try and adjust the camera so you can get sort of like a wider angle view. Okay, that's more normal of how you're gonna look at it, right? You're not gonna look at it so right up close to your nose. Look how cute that is, it looks totally fine. Okay, so let's see where we're at. Um, how much time have we spent on this already? Okay, well it's 20 minutes. Let's do one more and then we'll call it quits for the day. We want you to feel like you got some good value for your time. We don't want you to feel like you're like, that's all, that's all she showed us. Okay, so let me pull this up a little closer so you can see. We're gonna do this. We're gonna save those little clamshells for later. Um, I am probably going to put one more circle in here and, but I want to show you this little yin and yang. It's one of my absolute favorites. And so what will happen here is either I would have to sew around to get to the next two and hop. But what I think I'll show you is, um, the jump stitch. So I really like that. I think it's really easy to hide in this. And then you just hop over and you keep going and you hop over and then you don't have to worry about trying to free motion that around that. Okay, so let's start doing that. So the rule for this one is you're going to stitch back and forth three times. And the, the reason that that's important is as we stitch one, two, three brings us back to here. One, two, three, then we're here, then we can jump. So the number of rotations for any given design, if it's an odd number, it has the ability to advance you. If it's even one, two, it brings you back to your start. So that's something you can always think about before you start. 
what number of um, design iterations are, am I going to do so I can move forward in my design? Okay, here we go. Enough talking. So let me show you what the shape is going to look like. This is the middle right here. Doesn't matter if you pick this side or this side, but just choose one side and you're going to make kind of a deep S. Okay. And then we can come back on it. And we're trying to sort of end right there. And then this one will go the other way. So here I'll do it one more time. This is the middle. A little deep S. And then here you're going to make it deeper. And then you're going to come on the other side and make it deeper. And that's this little yin and yang fill that we're going to do. So maybe the first one is a little balanced, not super deep. But then the top one's going to go over and under. And then the next one will go the opposite way. Okay, so I'm going to erase that just so we don't have all this mess on here because I want you to be able to see it a little better while I'm doing it instead of having all this chalk on here. But you get the idea, right? Is there any questions about the path for that one? I'm not getting to ready to make some Easter stuff. You know, I, I've always wanted to do that. I started an Easter project like 20 years ago. <laughs> And I never finished it, and I just hardly do anything that is holiday-oriented. I don't know why. All right. Well, I'm glad. So, Bonnie, I'm glad you like these demos. You know, I, I feel like I am just like everybody else. I don't have this idea that I'm perfect and I'm better than anybody else. I'm learning, too. I'm improving, too. And one of the advantages that I have over some people is that I've just been doing it for a long time. But I mean, I had all the same fears and anxieties. I want my quilt to look perfect too. And now that we have um, better tools than ever, better threads than ever, we have the ability to just relax and let, let the quilting happen. Okay, thanks. I'm glad you guys enjoy Friday. I do too. I'm lonely at home. I love talking to you guys. It's very creative and, and it's very energizing. Okay, let's see. I'm just trying to go through the questions really quick, make sure. You, I think everybody's watching, but there's not too many questions. Okay. Oh my goodness, lots of comments. All right, well, if you like this, do me a favor. You can like, comment, or share. I don't have any giveaways today, but that just, you know, lets other people kind of maybe benefit from what you're experiencing, if you don't mind. So no pressure. I'm not, you know, it's fine. Do whatever you want to do. I'm, I'm fine with it. So let's start right here. Let's pick up that thread. We're going to start right in this boundary right here. So let's talk about one other thing as we're getting this tacked in. Many, many times people come to their sewing machine in the morning and they're like, oh, okay, I'm ready. I'm ready to sew. Well, here, get some little piece of crappy something first. And let's do that little warm up, right? You don't go out to the sports field and send your kid out there and be like, oh, here's the game, go play. Okay, do a little warm up. Do a little bit of muscle development, get your eyes attuned, do some little swirly curlies, check your tension, always check your tension. I, I have been bitten by that more times than I can count, right? Then, you know, you flip it over and you're like, what happened? It looks terrible. It looked so good yesterday. Okay, so, you know, check it. Make sure it looks good. Okay, don't skip that step. But just like anything, this is a physical skill. And if you don't warm your muscles up, then what happens is in the first 10 minutes, you're going to start warming up. And in the next hour, you're going to be really loose. So the, the stitches you do right in the first 10 minutes, they're gonna look terrible because <laughs> you're not comfortable. Your body's not warmed up. So make sure that you take just a minute or two, get some piece that use kind of your little scrappy bit and just make sure that you're checking those things and let your body warm up because that does really make a difference to the size and everything and how smoothly that you can start. So let's do our first one. We'll tack these in, little tacking stitches right here. And visually, this is my center line, so just kind of think about that. And just try to come back to that center spot. 
these are very narrow. If I had a bigger space, I could make them bigger. So let me just show you what that looked like. Can you see it? Right, so the center one is balanced, a little bit narrow top and bottom, and then the other ones, the outer one is gonna be deeper and taller, okay? So let's do it one more time. Remember that you're visually estimating the center, and we'll go down. That's the center that I'm aiming for. Come over the top and down underneath. Trying to finish right in the middle of the circle as much as possible. If you don't, it's okay, nobody cares, it's totally fine. So I'm tacking it, I'm just gonna pick up my needle and I always release my presser foot because that creates the slack in the thread. If you don't lift this up, the thread's gonna be tight. Okay, so just pop over. You're gonna put your needle down right in the center again. We need to tack this so that those first stitches are secure. So put a few tacking stitches right there. There's a lot of extra stitching right here already, so don't worry about it. You and reverse over the top. Okay, same thing. Now we'll come right through the center, down. Okay, here we tack it in. Lift up your needle and your foot to release the pressure and bring yourself over. Put my needle right down in the stitch line. So I'm right in the circle. Put a few tacking stitches right there. And then we'll go this way. Now, could I go the opposite way? Of course. You can go whichever way you want. I just find that for me, if I start changing directions for this design, I kind of feel like I, I mess up more, like I can't uh, get the rhythm as well. So I try to do mine kind of all in the same direction. So let's go ahead and we'll cut it. So putting my needle down where I left off to pick up that thread. I'm tacked off already so I can cut this bobbin and I can trim that. I'm gonna let the bobbin go away down to the bottom and then just get these threads here, trim them off right where we left off. And I'll, I'll bring it up so you can see it a little better. Now, when we're stitching, notice that we went in a line right here, right? We went in a line, so there's no stitching underneath that is gonna trap this thread. So we've tacked all of these. I can literally just come back and I can just clip these. But remember that those threads also are on the bottom and they're going to need to be snipped on the bottom. So before I did anything else in this area, I would wanna make sure that I'm cutting those on the bottom also. All right, let's see how we did. Here, we'll flip it over on the back too. So there you go, this is the single tone thread and you can see this thread's much lighter weight than this 40 weight. This is where you can really see the difference in the texture of the thread. These were sewn with 40 weight when I was making the circle, this uh, little swirl. These are sewn with this 80 weight and you can see how much lighter that they are. So it's a big difference visually. You, you don't think that it is, but when you see them right next to each other like that, really big difference. So just something to think about as you go. And then here's the front. And there's no rules about you know, what you can use. If I wanted to use this 40 weight, of course I can, and it looks great. You can see how much heavier it is here, and it kind of looks more matchy-matchy. That's just a decision for you, up to you, whatever you want to do. Okay, so let's see if we have any questions real quick before we cut it. I know, I, Nancy, I'm really human. <laughs> just like everybody, there's no robot here. So somebody mentioned, you know, how the design was made. So all of the framework here, like these clamshells, 
the circles, these ovals. This is a sample from Fun and Fancy, which is a Westerly set of templates that I have a design book that accompanies. And so all of these were done from a class. And then what we're doing is we're filling in. We're just showing how different little fills can create a lot more visual interest in the space. And you can fill in like here, I'm gonna fill in this with a ruler because I want this to echo the shape here. So I want it to be a little bit more precise because it's gonna match this line, which is very precise. But here, this fill, it just creates that bi-level. So right here, it's going to tack in. And then once I put this little puff in here, this will really jump out a little bit more. And I'm probably going to put some matching arcs in here and then some straight line fills in here. So I guess maybe we have at least one more session um, that we'll be doing with this. So the main designs are from the Fun and Fancy collection. And then what we're doing is the microfill to just enhance it and create a little bit more fun and not be afraid. Um, Mary, you asked uh, what kind of pen. So the fine line, this is ceramic chalk and it does have an eraser. Fonz and Porter makes these. I know Boheen also makes these. You'll see they look similar. There's also blue ones that are like blue on the ends with blue writing. They're basically the same. It's just a really fine tip, compressed ceramic chalk mechanical pencil. I like this style because it makes a very thin line. So when you need precision marking, this is the one to use. This does not come off as easily as this one does. This is just a, like a looser chalk. This is a fat mark, right? So you can see, and then this one, is this fine line right here that's the chalk right there so this is going to make a finer mark so i'll show you this does come off but it's not going to come off as easily you're going to have to go over it a few more times to get the chalk off and let me show you with this boheen chalk i like this because you can literally take any scrap and just go like this and it's off Right, so that's the difference. We did not erase this, that mark was there before. This was the fine line right there, and right over here was the fat boheen marker. So I use a lot of chalk, especially for darks, because chalk is pretty reliable if it's quilt safe chalk. Quilt safe chalk doesn't have any waxes or colorants or additives, it's just chalk, so it tends to come off pretty easily. Um, if you use some other like different brands that are not made for quilting that is kind of a risk make sure that you're using one that is quilt safe and always test your markers i know that people say that all the time but i've been guilty of not doing it too and i've been bitten a few times and i try to be really careful i don't like the chalk pen um, if you leave it on there for a long period of time it may not come off it's not as flexible as this kind of chalk. So that's just something to think about. I don't use friction pens. This is my own channel. I can say whatever I want right now. So I'm going to. I only use Air Erase, which is my favorite if I use um, a lighter fabric. This is no longer available from um, Collins. I think it's made by Dritz now. This particular one, I've seen it in made by Dritz. So there's been some changes to branding. The other one that I like is I like this brand, Soline, and this kind of shape, the Styla. This one comes with the blue marking, which is this one, but they also have it in the Airy Race. And the difference between these two, let me show you. This one is like a felt tip marker, and this one is a roller ball. See that? This one will write so smoothly, I love it. And I can get a little bit of a finer mark, but still a fairly sizable mark. This is not a fine line marker, but it rolls very smoothly on fabric. So I really like both of these. Air Erase has been terrific for me. Um, I've had it fail one time and I don't think it was the marker. I think there was some chemical on the fabric that it interacted with. But generally, if you're washing your fabric, you should be good with these particular products. I've never had them not come out except for that one time. So, okay. Well, that's it for today, you guys. Let's make sure I, I uh, answered all the questions.
Yeah, 10 minute warm up, okay? Before you do any of your most important projects. I'm quilting on my rulers on my first quilt, hard and lots of mistakes. So I'm gonna um, comment on Catherine Edwards' comment. Quilting is a skill. It is a skill and we have to start somewhere and we have to allow ourselves to start somewhere. When you made your first quilt, I mean, if you looked at my first quilt, I still have it. The binding stitches were visible on the back. You can literally stick your finger underneath them and lift them up. They were that loose. Um, a seam allowance in a couple of places where I was trying to like match some areas on a plaid is pulling out because I didn't have a wide enough seam allowance. And that quilt was used to death and loved by my son who was the recipient. And he's 26 now and we still have it. And I can still love it. I can just allow myself to know that that was the best skill that I had at that time to make the most beautiful thing that I could make out of love. And it was okay. It was loved and it was used. And so that is really important to allow ourselves to, to let ourselves be comfortable at the skill level where we are and know that if we keep on progressing, we can make something better. Because every project that we do, we learn something. So it's okay to just let yourself be comfortable where you are, but then reach for the next level with your further projects, right? All right, let's see. You guys have a lot of comments. Thank you so much. And thank you for the stars. That's like some new thing, I guess, that Facebook is doing. Don't feel like you need to do that, but I am thankful for it. It just is kind of a nice little thing. I appreciate that. Okay, so I'm, I'm scrolling down. I don't want to keep you guys hanging around. Um, I will go back through and check and see if there's any questions that need to be answered. But so today was doing our cute little stars right here. And you saw that's pretty easy. The bigger your space, it's a little more challenging. So practice in different sizes. Make some different size openings so that you can um, practice at a different scale. Don't always do things at the same scale. All right, so we'll see you next week. We're gonna continue working on this and we'll add um, the, the clamshells will be next week. Those oval, oval clamshells, we'll do those because there's a couple different designs on that and then I'll figure out something to do down here. So we'll probably have two more sessions with this particular piece, okay? Have a great day. Bye, you guys. Happy quilting.